Hey, what's up guys? This is Joe from Excel by Joe. In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, use a correlation in Excel to find the correlation between two columns, if they're kind of related or if they have no relation at all. In the example I'm going to do, I'm going to, I've got a list of game logs for one team, just for the Boston Celtics. And I'm going to go through it and kind of see which players correlate to other players doing well. Like if one player does good, does another player normally do good? Does if one player does good, does another player normally not do as well? And that can kind of help you that when you're picking your lineups. If you have one player who does good and another player doesn't, you usually don't want to have you probably won't want to, don't want to have them both in your same both of them in your lineup. So I'm gonna get into that in one second. Uh, before I do, let me just tell you about my uh, my video course. It's uh, spreadsheetschooldfs.com. It's got about uh, eight to ten hours of videos to um, help you use spreadsheets for your daily fantasy. So um, you might want to, if you want to check that out, the link is below. And also I have a bunch of spreadsheet lineup optimizer tools at optimizelineups.com. And that link is also below if you want to, if you want to check those out. So let's get into the video here. So I have here a bunch of game logs. You can get game logs from a lot of different places. I mean, you can uh, copy them um, maybe from uh, NBA reference. I buy mine from bigballdata.com. Uh, there's there's also a, a link down below if you want to check it out. This is just a, a portion of them. This is the la last year's game logs. See, I've got only Boston players in here. You can see it's got all the players and it's got all the dates of the games. So I've got all of this and I have the DraftKings points scored. And I want to set out a correlation to tell which players correlate to others. So I'm going to just start building it over here. And what I want to do is I want to get a list of all the players going across and the dates of the games here and just how many points they scored. So then we can use, easily use the correlation function to, to figure this out. So if you want to follow along, I'm going to copy all the players over to here. And I'm going to go to data. And then this little right here is remove duplicates. So I'm going to check on that, and all it's going to do is remove the duplicate so you only have one of each player. Um, my data is headers, which is player. I click OK. And I've got all the players right here. What I want to do is I want to copy them, and I'm going to right-click, go to Paste Special, and Transpose. Because I want to have them going all the way across. So now I can get rid of this column. Okay, so I've got... All the players' names going all across. Now I want to do the same thing, but for dates. So I'm going to copy and paste the dates here. And again, remove duplicates. And so it says there's 89 remaining. So this, there must have been 89 games. So now I'm going to copy this over. Control C. I'm just pressing Control C as a shortcut. And then control V to paste it. So now I've got a little chart here. I'm going to delete these. And now we've got all our players and the dates of the games. So let's uh, now I'm what I'm going to do to pull it over the fantasy points scored. I'm going to use a function called sum ifs. Sum ifs is what's going to do. It's going to sum all the values based on certain criteria. And there's going to be two criteria: the date and the player name. So, sum range is going to be this. It's our, our points. Criteria range one is the date. And what's the criteria is this. It's the actual date, 1023. And then the second criteria range is the player name. And I'm going to click here for the player name, Gordon Hayward. End of the parentheses. There, see, it, it just summed it up. There's only one instance of that, that date and that player, so it's just summing them all up, which is basically just pulling over 33.75, as you can see. Now I want to copy this over, but I have to first put dollar signs to make sure I'm anchoring some of these columns so they always stay the same. So I want to keep always looking at H, always look at column A. Um, we want to anchor the K. Because as we copy it across, we want to keep looking in this column. But when we copy it down, we want the number to change. 
we want to always look in column C here. Um, and then here we always want row two to stay the same because when we're looking at the player name, we always want it to be in row two. But when you copy it across, we want this L to change to M and then N. So we don't need to put a dollar sign there. So I press enter. See, now I can copy it all the way across. And then I'll copy it down just by dragging it down. And there we go. So now we've got our list of players and how many points they scored each each game. So you can kind of see, like here, Gordon Hayward scored 59 on this day. Kemba Walker scored 46. We don't know. I'm not sure what their averages are. Uh, if those are both good games or bad games, they're probably both good games. But we're going to use a correlation function to uh, to test these out. So first, let me we'll go over the function. Then I'm going to make a chart where we can check all this. So I'm going to start. It's a simple function. It's called C O R R E L Corel. And all that's going to do is just return the correlation between two columns. So what's array one? Array one is just going to be. Well, he's got a bunch of zeros here, so let's not even look at that. So just in the games he played, L3 to L59. Now, who do we want to compare it to? And let's just compare to, uh, here, Kemba Walker. So the ranges have to be the same because you've got to look at everything in column L to column N, um, like in uniform at the same time. So that's all, all you have to do. Then press OK. And we look at our correlation. Let's change, put this to a comma, to a number. And it's a minus 0.1. So your range of outcomes are everywhere from minus 1 to a 0 to a positive 1. Somewhere in this range is you're gonna is is gonna be the result. If you get a 1, that means that they correlate perfectly. Like Everything that one does, like if one is always great, the other one is always great. If one does bad, the other one does bad. And it would be a perfect correlation. A negative one means there's an opposite correlation. Say if, if Gordon Hayward does great, Kemba Walker will do bad or vice versa. And if you have a zero, there's no correlation at all. And But it's usually not one of those three, but it's somewhere in between those. And in this case, it was a minus 0.1. So it's close to zero, so it's an, it's not a great telling factor. But it is a slightly negative, so it's a little bit where Gordon Hayward does well and Kemba Walker does, um, does bad. So that's just explaining what the formula is. But that, I mean, what we want to do, we want to check all these players. And kind of look for the highest and the lowest... Uh, Correlation. So I'm going to copy these over. It's a lot of these players that don't score that much, it's not worth even using them, but I'll just put them in there right for now anyway. So I'm going to paste this over. And then what I want to do, I want to also paste them and transpose. So I have them like a kind of like a little table here. So I've got the players' names here. I'm just double clicking to make the columns wider. And here I can delete this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just make a little chart here for, say, like Gordon and Hayward and, and his canter, and then Hayward and Kemba Walker, just to kind of see their correlations. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start typing in the formula, equals C-O-R-R-E-L, and I'm going to do, I'm going to take, actually, what I'm going to, I will just do the whole column. And then it's Cantor's M. So it's column L and column M. It's going to look at them. Enter. Oh, I put a period instead of comma. And there we go. What I want to do, though, let's get rid of this formula here because it's going to be looking at that. So we want it only looking at these, these numbers. 
And it's it might not be 100% perfect for some of these because look at all these zeros he's got in there. So you might not be able to tell 100% on Gordon Hayward. But this will work for most of the players. And you can, you can look closer at it also. If you wanted to do a more of an analysis, you could just look at the games he's playing. But this is just a simple uh, video to just show exa how, to, how to use it. So what I want to do now, I want to put a dollar sign in front of the L. So it's always looking at Hayward, who's column L. And now I'm going to copy this over. So I'm going to compare him to every other person. I'm going to press the little comma to format it. And there we go. So minus 0.3, which is almost nothing for Cantor. There's almost no relation there. But if we look, he's got a 0 .2, minus 0.27, which is pretty high to Jalen Brown. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to copy this down. And Cantor is in column M over, over here, as you can see. So now I want to compare column M to column N with the correlation function. So we got column M, oops, pressing the wrong button here. Column M. Now I'm comparing M to N, but I want to put the dollar signs in front of the first one. So when I copy it across, it keeps, see how it's always M all the way across. And I'm going to do this just for maybe the first six or so guys, because once you get looking at guys who barely ever play, it's not worth it. I mean, you're never even going to pick them anyways for a game. So I'm just going to copy this across. Let's do this for a couple guys here. And then we'll take a look at the results. So now he's column O. Now comparing Marcus Smart to Jalen Brown, who's in column P. And we'll just do one more. Which is column Q. There we go. So now we have our chart. I mean, we, you could go all the way down, but once you start comparing these guys, it's it's not not, a, not even worth your time. And let's start. Let's just look at some of the higher ones. Here's a big one: Cantor to Marcus Smart. Um, even Cantor to Theus is a 0.32. This is probably the highest one. Here's a here's a minus 0.3. So we do have. I mean, it's going to be really tough to find someone above like a 0.5. Because, see, here's a point, whoops, here's a point four three, but Tremont Waters might not have played a lot. Let's just take a look at that one. So this is Tremont Waters and Kemba Walker. So here's Kemba Walker. And here's Tremont Waters. Oh, yeah, see, he's got a lot of zeros in here, so that doesn't really help us. But let's look at the guys who did play. Like, let's look at this one here. 0.29. Cantor to Marcus Smart. So looking at Cantor and Marcus Smart. If we look, Cantor has an average of about 15 points a game. And Marcus Smart has an average of about 26 points a game. They look like they played most of the full season. So Cantor to 15, Smart at a 26. So now let's look at some of the games. Well, it looks like a big part of the reason could be when Cantor's not playing, Marcus Smart is covering for him. Or when Marcus Smart wasn't playing, Cantor was playing. But this is just how you would how you look at it. See here, you kind of look at the players scoring one if they're for like an opposite one like this. Is his above twenty six? Well, his is 
below 15? In a lot of cases it is, but it's mostly because they haven't played. But if we find, look at another person here, Uh, what about this? To Daniel Theus. Cantor to Theus. Right here. So Theus is a 22 point average. So here we're looking at him. So as you can see, Cantor above above um, his average. Here, Theus is below his average. Here's um, a game, Cantor, way, way above his average. Theus below or near his average. So they're kind of working uh, working the opposite. Here's one. Theus is above a 30, so that's quite a bit higher. Well, he was below. See, look at these three games right here. All of these were good good, good games for, Can for uh, Theus, bad games for Cantor. And then here's a reverse. Good game for Cantor, bad game for Theus. So that's what the correlation will do for you. Now that you you see this, this is based on last year's stats, you may not want to put, if you're stacking the team, you may not want to have Cantor and Theus in the same lineup. But you may want to look for people who at least have somewhat of a correlation. Like here, Jalen Br Brown and uh, Jason Tatum, 0.12. It's not huge, but it's not a negative correlation. Or even this Hayward and Cantor, are, or Hayward and Smart, they're all both both pretty close. So that's what <clears throat> correlation will do. You can really get into this uh, pretty good. Even not even checking other players, you can check anything you want. You can check um, maybe point spread to how how their fantasy points do, uh, over under to how their fantasy points do. You can check a wider range of things using the the Corel function is a pretty powerful function. So that's all I've got for you here today. Hope you liked it. If you got any questions, put it down here. Um, also, push that uh, like button. Subscribe if you haven't, and uh, check out my uh, my course in my uh, at uh, spreadsheetschooldfs.com, and my uh, lineup optimizers tools at optimizelineups.com. Uh, that's all I got. Have a great day. Thanks.